<laughs> In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Veni Sancti Spiritus, repletuorum corde fidelium et tui amoris in eis in macende, emit spiritum tuum et creabuntum. Oremus, Deus, qui corde fidelium Sancti Spiritus illustratione da guisti, da nobis in iodem spirito recta sapere, ed eius semper consolazione gaudere per Christum Dominum nostrum. Amen. Good morning. It is February 16, 2021. It is one day before Lent, officially beginning tomorrow. So today's Tuesday. Tomorrow we begin Lent with uh, Ash Wednesday. So the gospel for today comes from St. Mark, chapter 8, verses 14 to 21. We'll read partly what it says in this gospel. The disciples had forgotten to bring bread, and they had only one loaf with them in the boat. Jesus enjoined them, watch out, guard against the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. The disciples didn't understand what that meant when our Lord said, guard against the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. You see, prior to this gospel, our Lord has just performed the miracle of the multiplication of the loaves. Okay, so they were still fresh from that miracle. And then our Lord talks about this leaven of the Pharisees and leaven of Herod. If you recall that miracle, our Lord multiplied uh, the bread that j that came from uh, uh, you know they said they just we have no bread you know they had a few pieces okay but our Lord multiplied it and fed five thousand so they were just reeling off from that great great miracle great experience of a miracle and they were in a boat headed towards uh, some other place and uh, they 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 still had that that uh, miracle very fresh in their heads then our lord tells them this be careful about the leaven of the pharisees and the leaven of herod so the disciples did not understand it they concluded among themselves we continue reading that it was because they had no bread when he became aware of this of what they were thinking he said to them why do you conclude that it is because you have no bread that I said, be careful of the uh, leaven of the Pharisees? In truth, what our Lord is saying is, you know, they're really not connected here. But, uh, you know, so he says, do you not yet understand or comprehend? Are your hearts hardened? Do you have eyes? and not see, ears, and not hear. Okay, let's stop there. In the first place, one thing that uh, a lot of people don't understand when they read this gospel from St. Matthew is the meaning of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. Okay? Uh, very briefly, what our Lord is warning his disciples here is leaven there is a metaphorical uh, symbol for the influence, the overbearing, overpowering influence that the Pharisees and Herod have had on the Jewish people. Okay? In the past days, we've been talking about, uh, you know, the many rules, right? that the, the Pharisees and the scribes and the authorities of the Jewish people have been imposing on them. And, you know, uh, the, the Jews for a very long time have been under the influence of these Pharisees in, in very many wrong ways. Okay? And it did not help them understand, really, uh, you know, the, the will of God for the, for the Jewish people, the chosen people. Okay? Until that's why Jesus had to come and, and, and reveal uh, the truths about the Godhead, God the Father, and, and uh, our salvation. But for a very long time, the Jews were held captive, so to speak, under the spell of 
the bad influence of the Pharisees, of Herod, and all other uh, kinds of influences around them that muddled up, really, uh, the will of God for all of them, for the people of God, the chosen people of the Jews. So our Lord was trying to warn them. You see, be careful about that because th those things are not the truth. And I came to reveal the truth. Okay? He was the revelation. He was the light. He was the way. He was everything else that has to do with truth for us in our lives. But you see, it's difficult to see the truth and understand the truth that Jesus wants to reveal to them and consequently to us now in our present day and age. It is difficult for us to see the truth, to see God, to appreciate the truth when our hearts are cold hardened and dead to sin that is why the question of our lord here is are your hearts hardened see are your hearts hardened so hard cold and dead to sin that is why even if you have eyes you cannot see even if you have ears you cannot hear because in truth you are like walking zombies Right? You're actually like walking dead because your souls are dead to sin. Because your heart is dead to sin. Because your heart has been numbed, has been insensitive, has been calloused by the piling up of sin that has encrusted your heart like a hard stone. Eh? You know very well from your science uh, studies, like right? Mia and Shabelle have been studying rocks uh, this past uh, several weeks. And what have you learned from it? Right? Uh, what do you call, what do you call Mia? Tell me, what do you call the rocks which had a piling up of different materials that it became what kind of rock? Sedimentary. Sedimentary rock. Right? And what is that all about? A sedimentary rock is formed by the piling up of many, many different types of environmental materials from soil, sand, and other things. And it hardens into a sedimentary rock. Right? Now you can apply that imagery to your souls, to your hearts. Heart here, heart here is, a, is another metaphor, is another image for the ability of every man to love. See? Love, which is which is the ability of the will. Eh? And, and the ability to love is something that only men created men creatures have, right? And and uh, if if that heart, so to speak, if that ability to love is deadened, numbed callous and insensitive because it is dead to sin then it is useless it's useless right and it's not good it's not good for us to be uh, spiritually like zombies okay like spiritual zombies that are really dead okay? are really dead and it's a mystery how we can be walking around, right? <clears throat> but you see, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> there are plenty of people who are spiritual zombies, who are really dead, who are really dead to sin and are walking about in their spiritual lives aimlessly, without any direction, without any meaning, without any hope for, for anything. Because their hearts are hardened, cold, dead. A hardened heart is insensitive, is numb, is callous. Now, insensitive to what? 
A hardened heart is insensitive to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. That is why our Lord says, Do you have eyes but cannot see and ears but cannot hear? Okay? Because we are insensitive to what the Holy Spirit wants to tell us. We are insensitive to what the Holy Spirit is showing us in our lives. We cannot see through what the will of God is in all the events that happen in our lives. We are insensitive to the suggestions of the Holy Spirit because we have ears that cannot hear. See? The ears of our soul, the eyes of our souls are insensitive. And then we are numb. Our hearts are numb. Numb to what? Numb to the pokings of our conscience. When our conscience is telling us, hey, that's not the right thing to do. You know, hey, you better, you better change your ways. Hey, you don't listen to the temptation of the devil. But we are numb. We are numb. Our consciences are numb. And we have no ability to listen to conscience. See? Or our hearts are calloused. Callous towards the need for repentance. We do not realize that we need to repent from our sins. That is what a calloused heart creates in us. We don't see the need to make up for our past mistakes. To make up for our mistakes, for our sins. We don't see it. Because our hearts are cows. But we cannot be like this. This is not what God had intended for us. Right? We, we were not created to be walking zombies. Spiritual walking zombies. No. We were created with a dignity of the children of God. We have to live up to that dignity. We have to have our hearts alive and, and fruitful and, 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 and vibrant with arterial royal blood that flows in every heart of the children of God. Okay? We are children of God, heirs to heaven, right? beneficiaries of redemption that Jesus Christ has wrought for us and which we will be reminded of in this season of Lent. Let us keep that dignity alive in us. Let us be live walking uh, uh, children of royalty. Eh? Rather than dead zombies walking around. And this time of Lent beginning tomorrow would be a very, very good time to remind ourselves of who we are and what we are here for. And where we are headed. Okay? What is God's intention for each and every one of us? He wants us uh, to abhor our sinfulness. Okay? To restore our hope in God's mercy and pardon. And we have to ask Him for the grace to live again with a healthy and vibrant heart-pumping Clean, arterial, royal blood, hmm, Eva, purified by penance. Purified by penance. Okay? Um, we have to resuscitate our heart, so to speak. Okay? We got to do some CPR on our heart. Resuscitate it by the grace of God. Okay? Because only the grace of God can resuscitate a dead heart so that it may learn to pulsate again with a love for God. Okay? Now, just a few days ago, we were listening again to the message of Fatima. Okay? And what does Our Lady of Fatima tell the little children, the three children of Fatima? What, do, what does the world need? What do each and every one of us need? Do you remember? Huh? 
Do you remember? Starts with a P. Huh? The three things. It is? Huh? Penance. Penance. And penance. <laughs> yeah. Well, yes, it's penance, penance, and penance. Okay? That's what Our Lady has been telling every one of us. Penance, penance, and penance. And every apparition of Our Lady has practically echoed the same thing from Lourdes to Fatima. Okay? Penance, penance, penance. And that's what we need to do this Lent. Okay? That's what we need to do to resuscitate our hearts. Okay? To keep our hearts alive and vibrant, uh, loving God and neighbor. We need penance, penance, and penance. And so starting tomorrow, well, actually, you don't have to wait for tomorrow. I would encourage you that as early as today, line up a list. Okay, Line up a list of penances that you might want to do for the whole season of Lent. Just like uh, the example given to us by the children of Fatima, right? They did all sorts of things from giving up their lunch to putting uh, hair, uh, um, hair shirts to, um, to you know, um, kneeling on hard ground. And they, you don't need to do those kinds of things, okay? I don't encourage that kind of penance. But there are many other things that are related to how we live our daily lives now which we would, you know, examine a little bit more as we go along. We would talk about these possibilities of different penances that we can do. But as early as now, I want you to think of a list. Not too many. You don't need to have a, a whole lot. One, two, or three that you will constantly do every day this whole time of Lent. Okay? To express penance. Do penance for sin. And by the way, just as a reminder to everybody, starting... Tomorrow, Lent, and uh, every Friday of Lent, uh, we do, the church recommends that we practice abstinence and, um, huh? and fasting, right? So the, uh, the rule, as far as the commandment of the church goes, for abstinence, it would be everybody 14 years old and above, okay? To do, to do abstinence from meat, okay? on Fridays of Lent and uh, on Ash Wednesday. And then um, fasting begins at age 18 to 59. Okay, 18 to 59, okay, would be uh, fasting. Okay, that's it for us, folks. We hope that you may have a good preparation for Lent. Um, and so tomorrow um, is um, Ash Wednesday, the beginning of Lent already. Okay, uh, excuse me. And um, so we hope that you, you know, everybody, we wish everybody a, a good Lenten yeah. season, a good journey through Lent. And let us all uh, keep a very prayerful and penance filled uh, season of Lent. Okay, now Eva's going to say goodbye. Bye bye. bye. <laughs> okay, bye bye, everybody. Have a good day. Bye bye. Bye bye.